All righty. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Teen Book Chats. Uh, my name is Alyssa, and I am the teen librarian for Cranston Public Libraries. And I'm here today to talk about middle school books. Uh, just a friendly reminder that we at the library, the library is closed right now, but there are still librarians here to help you. If you need any help with anything, uh, give us a phone call, uh, send us a chat request, uh, shoot us an email. We're happy to help you. Our website has a lot of great stuff on it as well. All right. So the first book that I want to talk about today, uh, like I said, books for middle schoolers. So we're talking like probably like grades six to eight approximately. So the first book I want to share is a science fiction book called We're Not From Here. So there's the cover. And it's by the same author as the Tapper Twin series. So if you like the Tapper Twins, you'll probably really like this book. Uh, it's very different. It's a science fiction novel. And it's about this main character named Lan who um, lives on Mars initially. And this is like a book that takes place in a world in like a future where earth has been kind of like demolished and what's left of humanity has moved to Mars and now Mars is like falling apart. And so they have to get on this like giant spaceship and go to a new planet to live. And this new planet is 20 years away. So they have to go into like frozen stasis and fly to this new planet and the aliens I guess really people are the aliens in the scenario. Um, but the aliens that live on the planet have um, invited them to come stay. And when all of the humans on the ship, including our main character, Lan, wake up, um, they're at this planet. They're sort of like orbiting around it. And the aliens that live there have um, decided that they can't land. Like, they're just out in space, and they're like, sorry, you can't come live here. It's been 20 years. Things have changed. You're not invited anymore. And so this is, like, catastrophic, obviously, for the um, for the uh, people that are living on the ship, all the humans. And so Lan and his uh, family, they have to go down to this new planet and try to convince all of these aliens that they should be able to be allowed on this planet. And it's a really interesting commentary on kind of, like, what it's like to not have a home and immigration. And I, I just thought it was a really great book. Um, it's hilarious, uh, which I don't think you always get in science fiction. Sometimes science fiction can be like super, super serious, but um, this one is like really, really funny science fiction. So that is We're Not From Here. The next book I wanna talk about is called Leilani of the Distant Sea. Uh, I also loved this book. Um, so Leilani of the Distant Sea is about um, a girl who sort of lives on this like fantasy island. So she lives on this like island community and um, there's like this this sort of like folklorish mystical thing. It's a book that's based on Filipino folklore, which is really cool. Very interesting. Um, and the her like community um every once in a while will sort of like send ships out like little boats out into the water to try and like seek their fortune and find better things and bring better things back um but no one ever like survives this sort of like ritualistic like we're gonna leave the island and come back no one ever comes back and they're all sort of like presumed dead <laughs> um and so leilani is like living in this community and through kind of like, I don't want to spoil it, but through like a series of events, she ends up on a boat sort of sailing away from her community, sort of knowing that she might not ever make it back. Um, and it's this beautiful like fantasy story rooted in folklore, beautifully written. It also has like giant birds and monsters and chase scenes. Um, and turtles and it's just like so beautifully done um, if you like fantasy this is definitely like something different like you've probably never read a book quite like Leilani of the Distant Sea so I highly recommend this one all right so my next book that I wanted to book talk for you is called The Disaster Days 
which right now we probably don't need more disaster in our days, but um, this one is a really great uh, survival adventure story. So the disaster days is kind of like what would happen if like the babysitter's club met the apocalypse. So our main character, Hannah, is a babysitter. She's babysitting uh, two kids that are sort of like her next door neighbors. And she lives in, I think they're in Washington state. And she lives on like a little like island. And it's not like far away from the shore. There's like a bridge to get onto the island, but there's not that many people that sort of like live right around her. And while she's babysitting with both her mother and um, you know, the, the mother of the kids that she's babysitting are off the island, a um, earthquake hits. So she's trying to survive. She has two kids that she's looking after she's kind of realizing that maybe like babysitting did not prepare her for this um and she has to try and like survive the immediate aftermath of this huge earthquake that like destroys the house shuts the water off there's no electricity um and so i just i love this story i love the hook of like what would happen if you were like babysitting super normal and then there was a giant earthquake not something all of us deal with every day um so i love the disaster it's got a great cover uh, very fast paced, pretty quick. It's a pretty short book. Um, and if you want something that's really going to like be super exciting, highly recommend The Disaster Days. All right, next book that I want to. So this is called I Can Make This Promise. And um, I Can Make This Promise, realistic fiction to set in our world. And it is a story about a girl named Edie who is indigenous. So her mother is indigenous and her father is white. And she knows a little bit about her indigenous heritage, but her mother had been adopted by a non-indigenous family. So her, her sort of relationship to her culture and her heritage has been sort of broken and interrupted by her mother getting adopted. So that's all she really knows about her extended family. Um, and then one day she, Edie is in the attic of her house and she finds this box of letters and photos and there is a photo of a woman who like clearly in the past that looks exactly like her um, and she's also named Edie. And so our Edie in the present, our main character Edie, sort of starts researching and finding out about her biological grandmother and sort of this story about um, this really specific time period in um, North American history where indigenous children were um, taken from their families and adopted out of their native communities. And so it balances this really um, hard truth about our country um, and about our past and about these really like horrible injustices that um, indigenous communities faced in like the 60s, 70s, into the 80s. And then also, it's a story about Edie, who's just like a 12 year old kid and gets braces and has friend drama. And so I love this sort of like, it balances that story really well. Um, and I just love that Edie is connecting with her past and her culture and then her parents and then trying to connect with like her larger family group. Um, it's so beautifully written. Uh, it's like, it takes place in the, I think it's the yeah, Pacific Northwest. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it also takes place in Washington State. Um, and it just has like a really beautiful backdrop. So, and in his own voices, um, the author Christine Day is also indigenous. Um, and so it's just a really beautiful and authentic uh, story. Loved that one. All right, the next one I wanna share is called Scary Stories for Young Foxes. This one is very different. It is horror, fantasy, the main characters are animals, uh, hard to kind of put in a box, but Scary Stories for Young Foxes um, is split into like three different sections, not truly short stories, they're just sort of like different stories within a larger story, and all the main characters are foxes, so if you kind of liked um, The Warriors, Wings of Fire, this might be um, like a good option for you. I found it really scary. I've had um, some teens tell me it wasn't that scary. But like, as you all know, I'm a notorious chicken. Um, but I thought it was actually pretty scary, but beautifully written, kind of dark. 
Um, I love, I'm usually not like in animals as a like main character person, but this, I really love this one. Um, and I feel like the, the cover, here I'll show it again. The cover is like a little creepy, but like, it's like kind of like a pencil drawing of foxes. It's like so well done, so in depth absolutely beautiful writing and then it has a really great surprise ending like when the three different stories sort of like weave together at the end you have this like wonderful aha moment um and i highly recommend it especially if you like animal stories but you don't really want to dive into a series like the warriors and wings of fire I have a ton of books in them um this is just a one one off this is standalone so love scary stories for young foxes it was also a newberry honor book i think leilani of the distant sea was too all right, the next book I want to talk about is called Focused. Um, this is another realistic fiction, and this is about our main character's named Clea. She's in seventh grade, and Clea loves school. She works really hard. She has really great friends and really great teachers, um, but she just sometimes, like, can't get it together. Like, within the first, like, ten pages of the book, you see Clea, like, running around trying to get ready for school. She loses her phone. She can't find her homework. She's just like having a rough time. Um, and so her story centers on her sort of being diagnosed and having to navigate what it's like to have ADHD. And I think that her experience is just so valuable and so fascinating. And seeing her sort of like try to figure out like the best way for her to be her best self um, and at first she's very scared and nervous about being diagnosed with ADHD. And I just love how she navigates that and works through it. And then there's also all this great stuff where she's on the chess team, which is a little different. And she loves chess and she's very smart. And I love that this shows that like you can be super smart and very driven and love school and still have ADHD. Like there, it pushes kind of back against like stereotypes um, about what it's like to have, uh, ADHD. And I loved Clea. I loved her family. I loved her friends. I love that she was obsessed with chess. It was just so well written. And this is another, um, like own voices book. So the author, Allison Gerber, uh, she has ADHD. And so she knows exactly what that's like to try to get your homework done when your brain wants to go in a million directions. So loved that book. It's got a great cover. A lot of these have great covers. All right, so the next book I want to talk about is called A Good Kind of Trouble. And A Good Kind of Trouble actually has a quote from Angie Thomas. Angie Thomas wrote The Hate You Give, which I feel like if you don't know what The Hate You Give is, what are you doing? Do you live under a rock? It's a great book. Um, but it's, it is a high school book. We're talking about middle school books today. So this has sort of um, been billed as like The Hate You Give for middle school. So our main character, Shayla, um, goes to school, it's a realistic fiction book, um, and she, through her family, her school, her sister, her friend group, starts to find out what the Black Lives Matter movement is all about. And so this is a book about activism, about community, about um, you know navigating your place in the world. I don't wanna spill too much about it, um, but definitely a really great option. If maybe like, the Hate You Give is just not quite where you're at, but you're still really interested in this topic or reading this type of book. Um, a Good Kind of Trouble is a great place to start. It's very similar to The Hate You Give, um, but you know it takes place in middle school. All right, so you all know how I feel about sports books. They tend to not be my favorite, but I really liked this one. Let me show you. So this is No Slam Dunk. This is one of Mike Lubica's newest books. And it's a basketball book. Um, but it's about um, a basketball player named Wes. And he has this sort of like rivalry with one of the other kids on his basketball team. I think his name is De Niro, and, or his nickname is De Niro. And they have this rivalry and it's sort of like, Sometimes they feel like friends, but then sometimes it really feels like they're against each other, which can be really confusing and difficult when you're supposed to be on the same team. And so Wes is like really into basketball. It's really important to him. His team does really, really well. Um, they're very competitive. But then Wes is also dealing with the fact that his father has returned from um, 
being deployed overseas and he's come back with some really um, heavy PTSD issues. So he's trying to like navigate this thing with his family and his father not being able to be there for him um, in the way that he needs him to be. And he has just this really great relationship with his mother and his teammates. And like I said, sports tend not to be my thing, but I loved this book. Um, I loved the friendships in it. I loved the family members in it. Um, and if you like basketball, you'll probably really like this book. Mike Lupica has a lot of awesome sports books, but this one I particularly liked of his. All right, so the next one is called They Call Me Guero. And this is a um, like collection of poems, novel in verse, um, book about what it's like for a young boy to be living on the American-Mexico border. And so I thought it was beautifully written. I love the poetry. Um, another one of those like own voices book where the author actually like has that lived experience of being someone that lives on a border town or lived on a border town. Um, and being in Rhode Island, it feels like this is an experience I don't have. I live very far away from the American-Mexico border. And so reading this was just such an interesting perspective for me. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's a very quick read because it's written in poetry. Um, so, 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 so good. Um, highly recommend. So my last book that I wanted to book talk is a book that hasn't come out yet. So all the books I've book talked so far are all out. They're all in the e-zone if you want to um, check them out, check out the ebook or the audiobook. Um, but my last book that I wanted to book talk today is called Once Upon an Eid. And um, it comes out next week on May 5th. So um, if you don't know what Eid is, it is a Muslim holiday. And so this is a collection of short stories all about the holiday. So um, I'm not Muslim, so I don't celebrate Eid. So this was super interesting to me. I loved learning about all these different cultural traditions, family traditions, um, food traditions, super interesting. Uh, it's all different short stories. So it's all different Muslim authors writing about um, this holiday and their like cultural and faith traditions. Um, so if you are Muslim and you celebrate Eid, you'll probably love this and recognize a lot of things in it. If you don't, and if you're like, I don't even know what you're talking about, pick this book up because you're going to learn a lot um, and just really great writing, really great stories. Alrighty, so those are all my recommendations for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions or need any help, please, please, please contact us at the library. Even though the library is closed, we're still here for you. We miss you all very much. Um, next week, Elise will be here for team book talks or team book chats to talk about horror novels because I can't talk about horror novels because they scare me too much. Um, so if that sounds like fun and sounds like your jam, please tune in next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day.